gave you Super Daryl Deluxe. Um, and how did you get on with that? Okay, so I'm going to read to you all the notes I wrote down about this game. Game is a 2D Metroidvania RPG. That's literally all I wrote. I'm already sold. The reason being <laughs> is that I got into the game and then forgot I should be writing notes. Ah. That is a very good sign. I mean, it's bad for the podcast and you suck for doing no, that. Cause... But it speaks well about the game. Because I've got plenty I can say about it because like, I've been playing it <laughs> regularly. Uh, so... The game itself, basically, you play Daryl, who is a, I think, high school student, uh, who has a very vivid imagination. He lives in, well, it plays in the school itself, and shit goes down. So, it's hard to tell if what's going on is actually happening, or if it's in his imagination, and it's not actually happening. Like, certain parts are obvious, but certain parts not so much. Uh, like, for example, something early on is one of the first bosses you fight, uh, you meet a bully who then turns into like a giant Donkey Kong type thing and you have to beat him up, but he doesn't really, it's just how your character sees the bully fight kind of thing. So, you know, it's like little things like that. Uh, and yeah, and then there are like weird portals into other dimensions, which th th those parts. The game's not going to end up with like, you know, Hey, congratulations, you beat the boss. Real world, you've just killed all the students. Maybe. I haven't beaten the game yet. I don't think so, though. Uh, as for more of the story, so you, you get more of the story through, like, newspaper clippings and playing the game itself. Uh, it starts with, your, well, basically, you're just a guy who wants to make friends, who's kind of a hippie-looking character, who doesn't speak and gets taken advantage of. You find textbooks to learn skills, and you gain experience from fights. You fight by using those skills that you get from the textbooks. And everyone plays a game called Dwarves and Druids, which is basically D&D, &D, but their version of it. In fact, it, <laughs> what a bunch of it is still D&D, &D, I guess, because it's Dwarves and Druids. But yeah, uh, as for the, the way the gameplay is, it's side-scroller, 2D, combat-based. Now, the combat, you've got four skills that you'll be using and of course the more experience you get in each skill you can upgrade them you can move this you can switch the skills out with other ones so you've got a massive array of abilities and such that you can use but only four at a time and it's platformy and it's also metroidvania because you'll be like going from one place to another to because you'll get newer abilities stronger abilities such going back more exploring or you get keys and stuff that kind of stuff that is generally how Metroidvania oh, yeah, work. You know, but yep. you know, not everyone knows what Metroidvania is. Not everyone has played Metroid, I think. Sometimes. I love Metroid. I love Metroid too. <laughs> and if if you look at the the screenshots on Steam, Donkey Kong type boss is the well you you can see which one it is. Where it mm -hmm. says It looks like Donkey Kong. Exactly. Oh yeah, there's even like the girders and everything. Exactly. Uh, my main gripe with the game was Sorry, just because we're on the topic of screenshots, did, did, did you do you know the game, the Flash game, Super Fancy Pants Adventures? Oh, yeah. I love that. The way he moves and his style, he kind of looks like Super Fancy Pants. Yeah, I can see that. He is he's very flowy in his movements, like a lot more than others. Hmm. But even the general art style kind of reminds me of it as well, <laughs> with way more detail. Yeah. But yeah. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, and in, in the screenshot where it says happy wake up day, there's that statue there. Those those two people, you find out at the beginning, are trying to make a united communist world. I can get behind yeah. that. And they managed to turn this city into a united communist city. And this has happened. Nice. Uh, but I was saying my main gripe with this game was at first I could not figure out where I had to go. So I spent a good hour of doing absolutely nothing. And then I found out that there was just a random character I had to speak to, which was gonna cause a vent to fall, but there's nothing that made me have to talk to him. But then from mm -hmm. that point, I thought, okay, I might as well just talk to everyone. And they do, it does get very straightforward as to where you have to go and stuff. It's not, the, it, that part was just the only thing, cause I knew it, cause 
when it comes to RPGs, I don't always talk to all to the M all the NPCs because like there are so many of them. Sometimes a lot of them are just pointless chatter. That's fair. So that sounds good to me because uh, I recently beat the game Strider and uh, I liked it, but my main complaint with it was it was too obvious where to go. Like it, it always gave you an objective marker. So this game doesn't do that, does it? No, the, it does give you an objective marker when you're in the room with the objective. Like, if your objective is talk to this person, when you're next to that person, it'll have the marker on him. Or if you open up the map and you've been to the room where the objective is, it'll have the marker on it. But that's that's about it. You don't have an arrow saying, by the way, you need to go to this room, that room, that room, that room, and then you're there. Yeah, so progression generally tends to be just by exploring the map. Yeah. At the, the point where I was having trouble, I was level 2, I was fighting level 6 ghosts, just because that was the only place I could go and I thought that's where I had to go. After lots of dying and leveling up, I found out it wasn't where I had to go, and then I found the place where there were level 2 monsters. See, that sounds like Dark Souls to me. <laughs> this is the Dark Souls of Metroidvanias. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's not actually that hard, it was just I went the wrong way. Yeah, but the same thing happens to me in Dark Souls. The first thing I think a lot of people did this because you go, you have to go down like a particular dungeon, but instead there's this cemetery that looks open and just there, and there's these skeletons that like one or two shot yeah. you. Yeah. And I remember, like, I heard the game was hard, so I assumed this is what the game was. Fuck, this game is ridiculous. I hate this game. And then I found a guide that said, no, you have to go the other way, you twat. I was like, oh, this game's actually quite yeah, fun. Yeah, the Dark Souls punishes you for exploring. Yeah, that's a problem I have with it. But you know, but this is not about put it's not about. You, you Dark Souls. finished the Dark Souls of Metroidvania's Hollow Knight. That's what it is. It's Hollow Knight. I did finish it. That was such a good game. That was an amazing Metroidvania. I didn't like it too much. Like I Really? Cause that it's like the standard to which I hold Metroidvania's now. It it is my favourite Metroidvania. Like I would say it's better than Metroid. Metroid was a great game, but it this is iterated or iterated upon what made Metroid and Castlevania so good. It is by far my favorite Metroidvania. It's good, but I'm bad at it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm not bad at it. I'm just having trouble getting into it. But oh, that's a shame, but fair enough. That game. Now, do you guys have any questions about Daryl? <laughs> um, do I have questions? Right, I, I mentioned Fancy Pants already, so not really there. Like, it, it seems to call itself not a Metroidvania so much as a RPG-vania, so... How how does the RPG ness work? Like, well, you get experience for everything you kill. Uh, you get you have mm -hmm. two different types of experience in the game. You've got normal experience, which levels you up, and then you've got skill experience, which is the exact same amount as the normal experience, but you store it and then you can use it to upgrade your skills. So your skills go from I forgot the full ah uh, yeah trash okay good epic uh, hmm. and no matter what level you get them at then they'll have levels as well so like if i've got a trash skill which is just punch i could upgrade it to a four or five punch combo kind of thing but obviously okay. it takes experience to do that you need a wide variety of skills as well because in the game there are like uh, little robots that you have to destroy with certain types of skills like with a uh, an uppercut type or a flaming one icy one that kind of thing of a certain level, so one of them will be a trash level punch, one will be a an epic level explosion, that kind of thing. Uh, and they unlock textbooks. The textbooks are used to buy new skills, because you know, it's a school. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, the, the beginning of the game starts with you just looking for a textbook for two guys who take advantage of you, and they make you their product manager which is basically the biatch who goes around collecting textbooks for them and so what you're saying is the game starts with two guys taking advantage of you and making you their bitch basically <laughs> but i was being a polite person but yeah right uh is the game voice acted it is in the cinematics it's voice acted and there are a few cinematics like uh when certain stuff happens uh, some of the conversation is, uh, the important conversation is, but the non-important isn't. Okay. So like the person who told me that, oh, air ducts sometimes fall on the floor, wasn't voice acted. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, the side quests in this are a little bit disappointing because they are a lot of fetch quests. 
Mm -hmm. It's a lot of, oh yeah, um, I need 10 pieces of glass so that I can make this weapon. Or, I would like to feed the class, so please get me some moldy cheese and some bat feces. And that what? kind of stuff. <laughs> I need some bat feces to feed people. It's a chef. Okay. Oh, well, it, it is a school chef. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I actually got this game on Humble Bundle, uh, Humble Monthly, I think, so I'm definitely going to install and play this game. Actually, so did I. So <laughs> Sorry. I've got a free copy of this game. It, it came, the Humble Bundle came out after, and I saw it on Humble Bundle and went, no! <laughs> so actually, I was going to ask if you just got the Humble Bundle, no, but I don't no, want this, give it to no, him. No, I don't have the Humble Bundle! <laughs> I, I did my research and I picked it. Because I keep picking games that you're either bad at or don't like, so I tried. <laughs> well, do you want to ask me the question? Yes. Would you recommend? I would I would definitely recommend this game. If you like RPGs and you like Metroidvania, then yeah. Uh, the game itself, it's a lot of fun. And like I said, notes-wise, I only managed to write one line down before I got engrossed in the game and then forgot about writing notes. So... It it's a good game. Like yes. Yeah. Well, th that that that's that speaks words, doesn't it? So, would you like to talk about a game that you gifted? Jay?